Holy sh We are finally here. Six months after Ubiquiti released their Superlink video, we finally have the first couple of products to take a look at. So let's jump in. We have the first two items that have been rolled out for the Superlink devices. We have the environmental sensor, which you can see by the box is quite small and compact, which is good. And we have the POE siren. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box and discuss some of the specifications. Let's start with the siren. So this is POE powered and can be powered via single ethernet cable. This has 110 decibel output on it. So this is almost as loud as the UI horn. So the UI horn was 120 decibels. This is 110. And this is the first look at it. We've got the nice plastic cover to keep it nice and clean as you're installing it. And then on the back, we have the ethernet connection here. You have the option to lift this up to get the cap installed and then pop that back down if you're installing it with a cable on the side or I assume if it's going into a ceiling, it can go straight up. We have a couple of brackets in here, so suspended ceiling and obviously screwing onto the wall. We have the cable grommets to make this nice and sealed tight. We have all the screws, depending on the kind of setup that you're looking to do. So we have a bunch of different screws in here and also a Torx key. And we have the final piece to the waterproofing tool as well. So moving that aside, we have then the environmental sensor. Now this does a few different things. We have a temperature sensor, humidity sensor, ambient sensor and water sensor. There's also a 3.5 millimeter aux jack for your water leak probes. Again, we'll have a look at what comes inside the box. So there we go, that is the first look of the device itself. So we'll take a slightly closer look just there. We have a couple of little probes, what looks like it could be for the water leak detection. So we have those at the front and the back. We have the ambient sensor, which is just in the middle right here. We have a function button, and then we have a temperature and humidity sensor, which is right here. This is, I assume, where the 3.5 millimeter aux can go. So that can go in there. It comes with the level. So as standard with all Ubiquiti devices, we have some screws to get it screwed to the wall. And then we have this right here, which you can either screw or stick to a wall. And this is magnetic. Really easy and simple to install. There's no issues, no worrying about damaging the wall and away you go. Final thing is the back of this. So we have the battery just on the back here. We can take this little cap just off just here. And then we have the CR123A battery. These are designed to have a long life, exactly how long? It depends how busy the sensor is and I've only just got them, so I can't do a longevity test on this unless you'll be waiting a very long time for the review. Pull the cable out, we can see the white light that's just appeared here. The final thing to note is there's a reset button on the back. So we jump into Unify Protect quickly to get the environmental sensor adopted and we can see I've just turned it on and it's appeared here straight away and we can go and click adopt. We'll give that a moment and then it's gonna appear just down here below. We can see right here. And there we go, we have the blue light on the front and that's all adopted and ready to use. It's really that easy and simple to get adopted. So we've adopted that one. We'll go through the process and do the siren as well. I'll get myself an ethernet cable and we'll pop this in like so. And we should see this being powered up just now. There we go, we should see some lights coming up on there very soon. So we have the white light right here. Let's go and get this one adopted. So we'll take it to the phone. And there we go, the POE siren has appeared. So we can see the connection is ethernet. We can click add and we can just click adopt. And there we go. Both devices plugged in and adopted and set up ready to go in less than a couple of minutes. So the biggest question you're gonna be asking yourself, well, what sort of price are these gonna be coming in at? Well, the environmental sensor comes in at $49. And then the POE Siren comes in at $109. The links to both of these products are down in the description as well, along with the Superlink, and these are affiliate links if you are looking to use them. Let's jump a little bit deeper into Unify Protect and see what some of the settings are. We can start with the POE Siren, and we can see that right here, we have the device version, etc., etc. And then we can go to the settings. Now within here, you can rename it as you come to expect. You can set some tags on it. For this, I'm gonna create a tag and I'm gonna call it Superlink. And um, we're gonna tag that one as Superlink just so it's easy for us to do any changes in the future. And then we have the volume. So I'm not gonna test the max volume because I'm in a room and it's gonna be crazy loud, but this is 20%. So keep this one in mind. So I'll test the siren. That for 20% is quite loud and it has the plastic case on it and I can still feel that in the in my ears. So I can only imagine what 110 decibels will be like uh, when you have that and it's above your head and it's literally screaming down at you. Other than that, there isn't really too much you can do within the siren. I was hoping there was going to be, because there is an RGB inside, so I was hoping there was going to be a bit of playing around with the colors. You can have something on there if you want, any branding colors, etc., etc. But um, the red is what you'd expect if this siren is going off. But there no, doesn't seem to be much in there. Now, maybe they could expand some of the capabilities in this. There is a speaker in here, so whether you could add in some custom tones or you could do something different. But even if it's different types of sirens, there doesn't seem to be any customization capabilities within here 
Another feature that might be useful, might not be a real world scenario, might be just made up in my head, is probably some custom messages. So if, other than if you don't have an AI horn and you want something played internally, maybe something like this could play your custom messages for you. But we'll have a look at some of the automations that we can do with this shortly. Next, let's move to the sensor. So we have the environmental sensor. I have to say this looks very similar to the sensor that we have at the moment. So we have everything in there apart from the motion and the door positioning. We have the water leak detection, which is built in. Normally you have to buy the three pack for that. So that's something that's additional. You have no alarms detected at this point. You have the light level, you have the humidity, and you have the temperature. And we can go into the sensor manager, which shows us all of this. At the moment, it's not been running that long, so I can't show you too much more in terms of historical data, but this is what it looks like at the moment. If I have a look at this, this was my studio door. You can see how the temperature goes up and down in my studio. Next, we have alarm manager. Now, this is going to be the most integral part of Superlink. So this is going to be able to set up all your automations and how it's going to work and how it's all going to link together. So we would create an alarm just like something that we've seen. So this is new in new layout for Unify Protect 6.1 and we click create alarm and then we can choose what we want to pick up. So at the moment we have the single sensor, which does a few different things. So we can go to sensors down here and we have the standard ones that we've seen. So we have low battery, open and close status, extreme values, water leak, and audio alarm detected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do extreme values first. So let's just do, and um, we'll leave that as it is. And that's set within the sensor itself. So we don't need to worry too much about that one at this point. We'll click the environmental sensor. I'm gonna zoom out one more so we can see it all the way. And then we're gonna do sound. So this is where we have the all the different settings along here. So I initially thought we might actually be able to play an audio file, but then I realized you can't click it with an audio file, so it's not possible. So we have a siren and then we can click that and you can choose how long you want that to play for. And then also we'll add another action and then we'll notify myself. So we'll put that in there and then we'll leave that as that and we'll click create. And then we'll do another one and then we're going to do objects. We're going to do motion and then we're going to do motion on a camera and I'm going to pick and then I'm going to pick the playroom for now. And then we can go again and do the sound and choose what you want it to do. I want it to do the siren so we can get it to do that and do. And again, we can add another action and get it to notify as well. So those are the two that we have right there. And if we want at any point, we can just go into them and pause them. So we'll pause the motion detection for the time being. Um, so no events will come through and we're going to do the extreme test. So just going back to the sensors, we can go to the sensor itself and we can see we have a high light level at this point because it's looking directly into the light. Uh, but if we go to the settings and we have a little look here, we can see what the safe zones are. We can see what the humidity safe zone is and also the temperature. So if we take this sensor now and then go and close this, it should now go dark. And there you go. That's gone off right there. So that's gone into a dark. So it's gone below the extreme zone and that's figured that out. If we do the same with the light, I've put it up to the light and it's seeing how high that light goes. So that gives you a rough example of how that works. So the humidity alarm worked, the light alarm worked, and that was all perfectly fine. That triggered what exactly what we want it to do. So if we go back to the alarms now, we can see, let's just go and pause that for the time being. So we can see there's a whole bunch of extreme tests that got triggered. And also you can see the screenshots from the phone. You can see the triggers that came through and all the messages that came through. It's telling you exactly what's happened. So we can see the brightness detected, the brightness detected, the humidity, and then the low brightness. So those are all the ones that we tested out when we were doing this. I've just enabled the motion detection just now and it did just scare me as I moved to, to the camera and uh, it picked me up. But um, let's take a look at this. So camera right here, we're going to turn it around and we're going to look at this. So a bit of motion going on here and we'll see it within a second or two. Hopefully this should pick up. No. There you go. That's picked up the alarm just as I turned it away from me. So just picked up the motion just there and you can see literally within a second as soon as that number changes on there this picked up right here and went off so it's really quick in terms of how quick the triggers happen which is one thing i'm impressed with you're not waiting for something to happen and then it's going through the system and then finally appears it just happens instantly like so even with this i covered the sensor and straight away it went off. Now there's one final test that I want to do and that is using a webhook. So I just created a webhook that I had here earlier. So two things I want you to, or a few things I want you to look out for. One thing will be toggling the light at the back. So you'll see that rope light going on and off. You'll see that light above my head just here. You'll see that going on and off. And then you'll also see my main studio lights come on as well. So the main room lights that you'll see come on. So that's a webhook that I'm testing out. Now the way to do that will just stick with the same motion detection. We'll go and edit this one. 
or edit the alarm. So we'll go into the alarm manager and we'll add in another one just to show you that we can add in multiple devices and we'll put in a webhook. So we'll do a custom webhook, we'll paste that and then we'll go and click save. So now that should pick me up, the room lights should come on and my curtains should come on and those lights, if they were off, they would turn on and if they were off, they were on, they will turn off. So let's go and turn this around and pick up some motion. There you go, that's the siren. And there you go, there's the lights that come on. They've turned off. So just like that, using these automations, you can do so much within Home Assistant as well. Let me just turn the camera away because there's no ability, because there's no delay. So it's picking me up again straight away, straight away, and it's doing it. But as you saw, actually, those lights came on and my room light switched off. My curtains aren't on a toggle, so it doesn't go up or down, they just go up. Just like that, using Home Assistant, it's so powerful and you can integrate it with some of your automations that you have within your house or your business. One final test we're gonna do, and that is to test out the leak sensor. So I have myself a bowl, which I'll pop this in, and I'll pop that in right there, and I have a bottle of water, which we'll use in just a moment. But going to Unified Protect, we're gonna create the alarm. We're gonna to go to sensors, and we're gonna test water leak. And again, we're gonna use the USL environmental sensor, and we're gonna do sound again. So we're testing out the siren, but again, the same concepts apply. You can have this going into a webhook, into Home Assistant, or any other automation tools that you have. You can get, or you can get it to send messages through Slack or however you wish to be notified. So we can go and we'll call this one water, water leak, and we'll go and create. And that's now been created. So we can see that right there. So there's a sound. So the action is to have a sound. And I'm just gonna go back and edit it again because I actually wanna add an action and I want it to notify me as well. And then we can click save. So then we're back to two actions. So we'll see if there's a water leak. So let's see what happens. The sensor is IPX5 rated. So it's obviously not meant to be outdoors. But, and it also isn't meant to be covered completely in water. So we'll put a bit of water in here. <laughs> you saw me jump just there. Literally, the moment the water touched the sensor, and you can see the red lights, within a moment of that water touching the sensor, it triggered the alarm and went through straight away. So you can see how quick it was when it picked up the leak. One thing I will quickly show you is I'm not gonna do this at 100% because I'm not crazy. So I've actually taken, I did show you this earlier, but it wasn't as loud. So I've taken the cover off and we're gonna do a quick test of this to see how loud it is at just 10%. So if I test this siren, you can see I'm talking about 70 to 75 decibels. If I test the siren, Right next to it, obviously it is quite close, was up to 96 decibels just at 10%. So that 10% mark is obviously still quite loud. And if we go all the way to 100%, it's gonna be that full 110 decibels. So we now move ourselves onto a distance test. Now I have an average four bedroom house, which I'm gonna be testing. So I have the room I'm in right here and next door is where the Superlink is located. So we're going through a set of wardrobes and then a stud wall to the other side. And it was getting around about minus 56 dBm, which is a really good signal rate. And for those of you that are regular viewers of the channel, you know what I do with my Wi-Fi testing, and I go to the furthest point in my house, which is downstairs on the ground floor and all the way to the other side. So approximately about, I'd say 10 meters on the other side, roughly, give or take. So a few stud walls in the way, a brick wall in the way. I was getting a signal of around at minus 77 dBm, which is still a really good signal. So I'm very comfortable knowing I can place all these Superlink devices throughout my house, and I'm not gonna get any issues in terms of signal. Finally, we move on to the thoughts. Now, I think some of you are gonna be happy that there's something out already. Not everything that you're expecting, but there is something available on the table. And some of you are gonna be like, well, is this it? Is there nothing else? But I have some good news for you. There are some more sensors coming later this year. So in October, we're hoping to see the Motion and the Unify Superlink Siren. So those are two things coming out in October. And then in November, we're looking to see the Entry and Break Glass sensors coming. So they are coming later on this year. There is a bit more of a stage rollout. This is a good start and it's a good testing point to get yourself into the Superlink environment. The good thing is you can use Alarm Manager and Home Assistant to use those web hooks to add to any additional automation that you might need, whether that would be at home or in your place of work. As always, as soon as anything comes available, you know where you need to go, you can come to this channel and you'll get the latest and greatest information. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.